Hello, my name is Ever Barbero, and today I'd like to talk about example 3.4, a, in my textbook, finite element analysis of composite materials using abacus. There are four ways to solve this example, and thus, four different videos. In example 3.4, we illustrate how a laminate can be represented in different ways, with different descriptions of the laminated structure, and different elements. Also, we show how to extract results for each lamina. In this video, we use thin shell elements and engineering constants. We describe the laminate, lamina by lamina, creating a section with four laminas at different orientations, and we give names to those laminas, so that we can track them down later, and get results in each of them. Abacus generates a lot of files, so it is best to set the work directory to a folder with the name of the example. Then, save the model database, even if empty, so that other files are named in a way that we can later recognize. The part is just a square plate, and we have seen how to draw this in previous examples, so we go fast here. In part, A, of the solution to example 3.4, we model the material as a laminate, with each layer material properties entered as engineering constants. When nine values are used to describe a single lamina, it is assuming that the lamina is orthotropic, with axes 1 and 2 in the plane of the lamina, and axis 3 along the thickness. Notice that some of the nine properties have equal values. This is because fiber-reinforced composites are simpler than orthotropic, and thus, they only require five properties. In this example, we define the section as, shell, composite, which allows us to enter the thickness and orientation of each lamina separately. If the laminate is symmetric with respect to its mid-surface, we can check symmetric layers, and only enter data for the bottom half of the laminate, starting with lamina 1 at the bottom of the laminate. For ply name, we can choose any name we want, to make it easier to retrieve the results later. So, K1 is the first lamina, at the bottom of the laminate, and so on. Next, assign sections to parts. Next, assemble parts into an assembly. As usual, we need step 1, after step initial. Within step, we have the opportunity to specify a field output request. A field output requests, tells Abacus what results we want saved on the output database, 
so we can retrieve those results from module visualization. Otherwise, Abacus may calculate many things but not save all of them in the ODB. At the bottom of the pop-up, we specify 24 section points, at which results should be saved. These correspond to 4 laminas with 3 Simpson integration points in each. Points 1, 2, and 3, are at the bottom, center, and top, of lamina K1. Point 24 is at the top of lamina K4, which is at the center of the laminate, with coordinate Z equals 0. In module load, we start by specifying a shell edge load, to apply traction on the right and left edges of the plate. Now, we mesh the part. For element type, we select a quadratic shell element with 5 degrees of freedom per node. This is a thin shell element, with 3 displacements and 2 rotations, lacking a drilling, Z rotation. The Z rotation would be needed to model, for example, folded plates. In this example, we show you how you can create your own node sets, for later use. In module mesh, we start by creating node sets called center, Y hold, and edges, later to be used to apply the boundary conditions. We need a set for the center node, to restrict rigid body displacement of the plate, that may happen even if the right and left load are equal, due to rounding. Next, we need a set, called Y hold, to avoid rigid body rotation, by holding the right and left edges from moving in the vertical direction. Finally, we need another set, called edges, to constrain the, out of plane, Z displacement. Once we are done creating the sets, we use them to apply the boundary conditions on those predefined sets. Now we go back to module load, to apply the boundary conditions. We name the boundary conditions with the same names we used for the sets.
Now, we need a job, and to submit it. When it is completed, we click results, which takes us to module visualization. In module visualization, we show you how to use the viewport annotation options, to make the visualization look better. Also, you can superimpose the deformed shape to the undeformed shape, to see how they differ. Material orientations let you see how the lamina directions, 1, 2, 3, are oriented. Section points can be used to get results at selected points through the thickness, in each lamina. Can you see the orientations changing, when we select K1, K2, K3, and K4? And of course, we can do contour plots. Not a von Mises stress, please. Okay, that's it for today. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can find more details in the textbook, by following the link in the description. Thank you.